Hey friends, I hope you are ready to continue reading White Fur Flying with me today. Uh, again, this is a simple chapter book by Patricia McLaughlin. Um, and as a little recap, we have Zoe, who is our main character. She has a sister, Alice, a mom and a dad. Her mom rescues and fosters Great Pyrenees dogs, which are giant white fluffy dogs. Her dad is a vet, and they have just gotten new neighbors, the Croft family. Um, Philip is the little boy, and his great aunt is Phyllis, whom he's living with, and there's a great uncle as well, but he hasn't been named yet. Now, Zoe and Alice and their parents have two dogs right now that are um, May and Cody, and May is about to be adopted by another family. So let's see what's in store for chapters five and six for today. Car, said Alice, peering out the kitchen window. Car, said Lena. Mama stood very still for a moment. Okay, she said, they're early. May knew the people who were adopting her. She had met them twice, once here, once at their house. I couldn't remember their last name, but their first names were easy. They were both named Tom, man and wife. How can that be, Alice asked, two Toms? He's Tom and she's Tommy, said Mama. Thomasina, I think. Alice snorted, and from that time on, they were known as the two Toms. I watched them get out of the car. The man Tom smiled at the woman Tom, who carried a pot of flowers. They walked up to the porch. May put her nose in the air and woofed. She was brushed. She was wearing her new green leather collar. Mama opened the door. When May saw the Toms, she ran to them and wagged her huge feathered tail. May, the two Toms said. They often said the same thing at the same time, and it seemed to cut down on confusion. Don't allow her to jump up on you, warned Mama. She's too big for that. Say off. Off, said the two Toms. Off said Lena loudly. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Alice, said the Tom woman. Here's her leash, said Mama. She handed them a folder. And here's the paperwork you'll need for your vet, a list of her vaccinations and early health records. You'll see she's healthy. The Tom woman leaned over and gave Mama a kiss on the cheek. She handed Mama the flowers. We thank you. We'll keep in touch, Claire. Call me if you have any questions, said Mama. I'd like to hear how she's doing. She's a good girl. Surprisingly, it was Alice who had tears. She hugged May, who was loving all this attention, even though she didn't understand what was about to happen. I looked at Cody, who stood to the side. Tom, the man, went over and patted Cody, and Cody wagged his tail. But he knew. Cody always knew that when a new dog came, that dog would go away again. I moved over and put my hand on his head. He looked at me with those smart black eyes. When the two Toms and May went out the door, Cody left me and walked to the window and looked out. He watched May stand by the car. We all stood there. May got into the back seat. She turned her head and looked at us for a moment. Then she was gone. It is dark night, only the night light glowing, when I feel something move next to me in my bed. I turn over and see his big face next to my face. He is stretched out on my white down quilt, white on white. I smile in the dark and put my arm around his big, soft, furry body. It's all right, Cody, I whisper. There will be more dogs soon. Cody saw, sighs a dog sigh. He sleeps. All is quiet again. Chapter 6 in the morning, Alice, Mama, and Daddy were looking out the window. What's there? I asked. Cody, Mama said. Cody was standing at the fence looking down the road where May had disappeared. He misses May, said Daddy. I'll go, Mama said, but I touched her arm. Look, I said. Philip walked down the yard toward Cody. He stopped part way. We could see his lips move. Cody turned around to look at him, then bounded away from the fence and ran to Philip. They walked together down to the grove of trees and stopped to look out over the cows. He talks, I said. Philip said something to Cody. It seems so, said Daddy. How come he doesn't talk to the rest of us, I asked. Maybe he doesn't have anything to say to us, said Alice. No, Philip has lots to say, I said. Lots. My voice sounded loud in the quiet kitchen. No one said anything. 
He thinks many things, and those things are trapped inside of him. Maybe something happened that made him afraid to talk, I said. I looked out the window. Except to Cody, I added softly. Cody and Philip are friends in some way we don't know about, said Daddy, and it doesn't have much to do with words. Cody liked Philip from the very first, said Mama. You know how Cody sometimes leaves food for a new dog when we take that dog in, as if he knows that the dog needs more? He's that way with Philip. He's a caretaker. You think Philip needs more? Like a rescue dog? I asked. I do, said Mama. Don't you? Alice sat down at the table and took out her journal. Poor Cody. The dogs come and go, and he's always left behind, said Alice. Maybe that is what Cody and Philip know about each other. They're both left behind, I said. Hey, with a very nice family, said Daddy. Don't know that about Philip's family, said Alice. Daddy took the cloth cover off Lena's big cage. What do you think, Lena? You can't know, said Lena. What are you writing, Alice? asked Daddy. I'm writing a poem called You Can't Know, said Alice without looking up. Daddy laughed. I looked over Alice's shoulder at what she was writing. She's telling the truth, I said, surprised. Alice always tells the truth, said Mama, filling Lena's water dish with clean water, even if it's fiction. Day after day, Cody stood at the fence looking down the road for May. And day after day, Philip came on his own to stand with Cody, sometimes getting him to play and run. Philip's good with the dog, said Mama. He should have a dog. That won't happen, said Alice. I wonder, said Mama. She took her pineapple angel food cake out of the oven. Phyllis Cross Croft is coming over for tea today, she said. I cornered her this morning. She put the cake on a plate and took out teacups. She put a bowl of whipped cream on the table for the cake. She put her rose-colored cloth napkins next to the teacups. Here, said Alice, she's coming here. Here, said Mama, and you and Zoe can find something else to do. She's getting rid of us, I said. Do you think that this is parental abuse, asked Alice. Mama and I laughed. Of course not. And then there was a soft knock at the door. Mama opened the door, and Phyllis Croft and Philip and Cody stood there like three guests come to a party. Mrs. Croft pulled back a bit from Cody, who seemed to want to lean on her. Cody, warned Mama. Zoe, you and Alice can have some cake and whipped cream with Philip out on the porch. Take Cody with you. Bye-bye, Cody, said Lena. Mrs. Croft jumped back. He talks, she said, her voice shrill and high. He talks, shrieked Lena, imitating Mrs. Croft's voice very well. She, said Mama. Is she mocking me, said Mrs. Croft, indignant. You can't know, said Lena, as we knew she would. Surprisingly, Mrs. Croft laughed loudly. It was a little hysterical sounding. Lena laughed the same way. She imitates all of us, said Mama. It's her way. Philip looked shocked that Mrs. Croft had laughed, as if, she'd, as if he'd never heard her laugh before. All right, children, you and Cody go out to the porch. You can take your cake and whipped cream with you, said Mama. She poured tea in a flowered cup for Mrs. Croft. We all shuffled out, carrying cake, Philip still staring at Mrs. Croft. After a minute, the door opened and Cody came out too. We sat down at the porch table, Cody close to Philip. We piled whipped cream on our cake. It was quiet as we ate. Yum, I'm not talking, said Alice. Me neither, I said. And Philip won't talk, said Alice. We all grinned big grins, whipped cream oozing over our lips. Moo, said Alice like a calf with a mouthful of milk. We laughed and laughed so much that Cody woofed at us and the sun came out from behind a cloud, creeping across the yard and up the steps to warm our feet. Cody was in the yard down by the fence, watching over the cows in the meadow when Mrs. Croft came out onto the porch. Thank you again, she said to Mama in the kitchen. Come along, Philip, she chirped. Come along, Philip, chirped Lena in the kitchen. Cody wheeled around when he heard Mrs. Croft's voice. He ran up the yard to the porch. Philip waved goodbye and walked down the steps. Cody nosed Mrs. Croft's hand and startled, she pulled her hand back, but then she reached out and let Cody sniff her. Mrs. Croft looked down at Philip and said something I couldn't hear. Philip smiled at her but didn't speak. 
Alice was closer to her than I was. What did she say to Philip, I asked Alice. Alice smiled. She said, is that really how I sound? And that is the end of chapter five and six for today. Tune in tomorrow for chapters seven and eight.